It is now in order to consider, consider amendment number 61 printed in part D of House Report 118 through 216. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from North Carolina seek recognition? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a, an amendment to the desk. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number 61, printed in Part D of House Report number 118-216, offered by Ms. Fox of North Carolina. Pursuant to House Resolution 723, the gentlewoman from North Carolina, Ms. Fox, and a member opposed each will control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from North Carolina. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I rise in support of my amendment. My amendment is simple. It would prevent taxpayer funds from paying for State Department employees to travel to or attend events hosted by the Clinton Global Initiative. The rationale is quite simple. The Clinton Global Initiative has engaged in blatant corruption and influence peddling that would make even Hunter Biden blush. In perhaps its most famous episode in 2014, Hillary Clinton approached the Moroccan government about hosting a Clinton Global Initiative conference in Morocco. The Moroccans fronted the money for the event by funneling it through a state-owned enterprise that was extracting and exploiting phosphates from a non-self-governing territory, Western Sahara. This sleight of hand amounted to condoning Morocco's sovereignty over this disputed land. You heard that right. It was cash for sovereignty deal formulated just as former Secretary of State Clinton began her run, run for president of the free world. This deal was so rotten that even the Huffington Post deemed Fox News' investigation into this matter a, quote, brutal, clean hit on Hillary Clinton's campaign, end quote. Indeed, the Clinton Global Initiative scandals are myriad and include an episode uncovered by the New York Times revealing undisclosed donations linked to the sale of U.S. uranium production to a Russian government agency. As expected, the Clinton Global Initiative was unable to withstand the scrutiny and shuttered shortly after the 2016 campaign. That is, until late last year, when the organization reconstituted itself. Its operations are no longer dark, and this is the first state and foreign operations appropriations bill considered since its resurrection. It has since morphed into a factory of radical elitist woke schemes. Just last week, the Clinton Global Initiative convened in New York to discuss how to reshape our economy to tackle the left's pet projects that will make life for ordinary Americans more expensive and worse. Given the State Department's enmeshment with the Clintons and the initiative, we need to send a clear message. No more coordination with the U.S. government, no more conferences with corrupt governments at the expense of the oppressed people of the globe, no more representation and participation by the State Department, an end to its commingling with official policy, and hopefully the beginning of the end of this corrupt organization's influence on U.S. policymaking. Americans simply can't afford more radical policies purveyed by an organization that allows the global elite to buy and influence American foreign policy. Join me in condemning the Clinton Global Initiative's misconduct. I urge my colleagues to support my amendment, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman from North Carolina reserves. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from California seek recognition? I rise in opposition to this amendment. The gentlewoman from California is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, boy, is this the level we've gotten to, uh, to tell the State Department what meetings they cannot attend? Will we start saying what meetings they have to attend? The Clinton Global Initiative is a platform for government, philanthropy, business, media, and academia to discuss identified problems and to brainstorm solutions. We should be encouraging such collaboration. The problems facing the world are daunting, and solutions will not come from one place. Let's take good ideas from wherever we can and not micromanage who goes to what meetings. I, approach, oppose, I urge my colleagues to oppose this amendment, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from California reserves. The gentleman from North Carolina is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
I see that my colleague has not refuted any of the things that I've said about the Clinton Global Initiative. Why in the world, again, would we ask American taxpayers to pay for people from the State Department to attend these conferences when they're likely not to gain anything positive from them and support a corrupt organization? I reserve. Gentlewoman from North Carolina Reserves. Gentlewoman from California is recognized. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I understand what this amendment does, and I don't accept the fact that it's a corrupt organization, and I do know the importance of, of these meetings and conferences in terms of us coming together for solutions to lead us to um, global peace and security. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman from California reserves. The gentlewoman from North Carolina is recognized. M uh, Mr. Chairman, may I inquire as to how much time I have left? One and a half minutes. One and a half minutes. One and a half minutes. Um, Mr. Chairman, we have a terrific debt on our hands in this country. We don't need to be spending any money that is not absolutely necessary to spend. Curbing attendance at meetings such as the Clinton Global Initiative is a good way for us to chip away at that debt and to save the American taxpayers some money. I think this is an excellent amendment. I believe that my colleagues will see that it's an excellent amendment, and I will continue to uh, advocate for its passage, and I reserve. The gentlewoman from North Carolina reserves. The gentlewoman from California yes. is recognized. Yes, Mr. Chairman, finally I'll just say what this does is um, another attempt to chip away uh, at our diplomacy. I um, reserve, I yield the balance of my time. The gentleman from California yields. The gentlewoman from North Carolina is recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity to offer this amendment. I believe, again, that it is good for us to highlight uh, this organization and the fact that we do not need people from the State Department attending its meetings. And with that, I yield the balance of my time. The gentleman from North Carolina yields. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentlewoman from North Carolina. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to.